unified in loving service to our neighbors for the glory of God. And so we gather in worship, we gather in celebration, we gather in prayerful consideration of many needs. And, and some of those needs uh, and, and blessings that we have this day include uh, birthday celebrations, Anna Lee Lawrence on September 29th, Lynn Fagler on September 29th, Norma J. Graham on September 30th, and Kathy Nestor on October 2nd. So be sure and share your birthday greetings and blessings to each of them. We, we certainly celebrate with them on those occasions. We do remember those that are in need, that are named before us this day. Sue Croy, Dennis and Betty Simonis, Betty Ratcliffe, Rose Stump, Ernie Akers, Eddie and Joyce Lester, Janet Tabor, Jean Payton, Stephanie Turner, and Kathy Bunn. There are others I know that each of us will remember in our hearts, and we pray that, that God's blessing and peace may go out as needed to each of those persons, that we may be His hands and feet in ministering to these people. Our church congregation does a fantastic job of, of trying to track and reach out, so if you know of any needs, be sure and share them with the church office. I have been blessed this past week with, with a number of remembrances from congregation members and groups, and I appreciate those and thank each and every one of you for, for that ministry, for your care and your prayers, and encourage us all to remember those many others that need, need those around us. We do have opportunities to be in ministry to others. We want to remember the food, group, food drive for McKeep that has been ongoing. We need to remember that because people need to eat daily. It does not stop at any time. So we need to remember that food drive and, and contribute to that as we're able to, either with items, uh, which you can find a list uh, on the website and or contact the church office about the list or about how to contribute financially. Additionally, we, we have a, a, another opportunity being uh, shared with us by the mission committee this week. Kind of the Christopher Middle School, the PTA and guidance offices uh, are sponsoring a carrying closet uh, facility for, for providing school needs, clothing, uh, other items, I believe even food for children in need for them to be able to come and draw from that as they as they need at school. Uh, so contributions are being sought for that. And again, that list I think it's, it will be on the website or you may contact the church office for that. We have a couple meetings uh, this coming week. We have the uh, Emotionally Healthy Relationship course and study is still going on. I believe that this may be the last session this coming week, uh, the 8th. Uh, that's on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, last week was very good. It, it, we talked about um, emotionally healthy fighting. Uh, so, it, it, you know, the wrapping up this week should be a very interesting program. If you haven't been part of it before, you still can join in and, uh, and hear Hear that final session take part. Contact the church office for the Zoom link for that. The Lay Leadership Development Nomination Committee will have a meeting tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. via Zoom as well. Uh, finally, the uh, the Montgomery County Baby Shop that we sponsor and host in our in our facilities here is in need of, of various items. Uh, again, they. Typical things that are consumables that you might guess at. So please uh, feel free to drop those off in the box uh, on the stage down in the fellowship hall, or with the or with the or with the uh, baby store directly. Uh, call the church office if you need any uh, information on timing coordination for that. I believe that's all the announcements, unless anyone here has something to share. Thank you, Pastor. Where that hurts, love God with our whole heart and mind and strength. 
as we love each other. Very responsible way. That's what we wear the mask today as come to in-person worship. As we sit in a very physically distanced way following the safety rules, and then as we follow the directions. Here we are. Let us worship God. First, as we confess our faith. As we are remaining seated, let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered by Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead,
Thank you. Let's be seated, please. Let us continue with sharing together in the morning opening prayer. God, source of all that makes life possible, giver of all that makes life good, we gather to give you our thanks. Yet we confess that we have often failed to live our thankfulness. What we have we take for granted, and we grumble about what we lack. We have squandered your bounty with little thought of those who will come after us. We are more troubled by the few who have more than by the many who have less. Forgive us, O God. In this hour of worship, accept our thanksgiving and teach us to make gratitude and sharing our way of life through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Amen. We now have some dedication for your prayer shows. Prayer show ministry is one of our very active ministries in St. Paul United Methodist Church. We have 16 prayer shows today to dedicate to God. It was made by our team. They made this, this is handmade. As they made this prayer show, they gave their time to God, their gifts and skills to God, and also they made this show as their prayer. The Spirit of God, Holy Spirit will go with to each of them who receive with this prayer show. So it is our thankfulness and um, our gratitude, with spirit of gratitude, as we uh, dedicate the 16th prayer show, especially in this time of very uh, challenging, loneliness, aloneness, separated by COVID-19. This prayer show will bring the peace of God, healing of God, wherever it goes. So let us join together the act of our dedication in prayer. Let us pray. Healing God, we offer the 16th prayer show to you. Lord, receive them. Bless them and use them for your healing and strength and comfort. We deliver to all the people who will receive this show. Let them know that they are not alone. They are not by themselves only, but you are always watching over them. Your presence. Your power, your provisions, always wisdom. We thank you for this ministry, and we thank you for all the prayer team members who have given their time, their skills, and their prayer. Bless their hands, bless their body and mind, and their soul as they continue to offer this precious ministry, the ministry of prayer for Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we pray this in your name. Amen. ourselves to hear the reading of the word by joining together in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Exodus. 
the Jewish people, the Israelites, are on the move. They're in the wilderness. And they're finding that they have needs and concerns. Here then, this part of the story. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people, and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us listen to the Washington Chamber singers singing, Lo, He Comes with Cloud Descending.
We'll continue with our readings this morning by turning to the Gospel of John. Water, water, water. Always a topic of conversation. In the Gospel of John, we remember the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman and his encounter with her at the well that Jacob had created years before. Let us hear this snippet of the conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Thanks be to God for this additional blessing of his word and his message for us this day. Let us pray. Lord, help us open our hearts and mind. And help us to listen to what you may speak to us in your word. Lord, speak to us. In your name, Amen. When we read the ancient stories in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, we reflect these questions. How are they relevant to us today? Relevancy. How do we know about God in this stories, and what do we know about human beings, you know, what do we know about ourselves, emanating in these stories? Most importantly, how is God, how is God meeting us in these ancient stories? That's very important reflection that we are called to ponder on whenever we read ancient stories of God. And the ancient stories of God today we read from the Exodus chapter 17. And I want to meditate with you the three very pondering thoughts from this passage today. Three. First one is, we are sojourners in this world. In other words, this world is not our convenient home, but we are on the journey. No exception. All of us. Exodus is an ancient story of Hebrew people who took a journey from slavery in Egypt to the promised land that God promised to give the land of honey and the milk. So they were on the journey. They were in the mood. The journey during which God taught them how to live in the land of freedom, liberty. And God disciplined them to be the people of God. How to worship God, how to love God, how to love each other. And how to live as, a, as the light of God for the world. They are joining the witnesses, teaching school. Their experience. 
And also their story is our story today too. We are sojourners, sojourners on our journey home. We are born and came into the world, live in this world, and when the time comes, we are living this world, no exception. We are journeying, we are on the move, in the journey. We are, therefore, sojourners. So apostles in the first century and their churches also confirmed this truth and they taught. Say that we are aliens and strangers in the world, the sojourner. Apostle Peter said that. Our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a savior from there. Also, Paul wrote it in Philippians. Therefore, we set our hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Apostle Paul wrote it in Colossians. This is what we mean by living in the world, in the world in a holy and set-apart life. Because this world is not our destination. Second meditation is this. So we share the same humanness with them in the ancient story. Same humanness. What do I mean by that? Now, Exodus is a desert story, wilderness story about the people who are stuck between the promised land and their fulfillment for 40 years. Now, who knew God by their experiences? Moment by moment, day by day, month by month. They became knowing God by their experiences. The story we read shows that. They continue to complain and complain and complain, grumbling and grumbling and grumbling. And that God continues to provide them, continue to lead them, continue to protect them. Human story. God's story. It is our story today. They were thirsty in the middle of the desert, according to the story today. And they grumbled against Moses. Even they tested God. And God brought them the water to drink. Let us focus on this word, what they said. They tested God, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Is it wonder, isn't it? They already have witnessed the wonder work of God from the beginning of their journey. Even before their journey in the land of Egypt, they already seen the miraculous signs of God there. But they're still, still complaining against God, doubting God, testing God. Oh, is the Lord among us or not? They continue to say that. It was to set God up and try to force God's hand in order thereby to determine concretely whether God was really present or not among them. That's what they said. Is the Lord among us or not? They set up some kind of boxes. They tried to force God to come to their own boxes to see the way, the presence of God in their own way. It is like a 
are saying today that if we are to believe that God is really present, then God must show us in a concrete way by making the water materialize as we wanted to see, the way we wanted to see. We read it. Another example, the temptation of Jesus, Matthew the chapter 3. Jesus was tempted by the devil. The devil's temptation is the same way. If you are the Messiah, Son of God, turn this stone to bread so that I can see it, so that I can see you are the Messiah. Make a regular sign, drop of yourself from the cliff, so that I can see God's protection, protecting you. It was a temptation, and also it was testing God. But Jesus answered that, do not test the Lord your God. That is Jesus' answer, testing God. A Bible commentator of this passage put it this way. Testing God today is like the same. I will not take special precautions in the use of automobiles or guns or on dangerous venture. Because God will take care of me. I will not take out insurance because God is my insurance type of thing. In our days such as this, it is like a saying, I will not cover my face. I will not stay away six feet. I will not wash my hands because God will protect me. It was act of testing God, set God up to order God to do what I, what we want Him to do. It is testing. Such attitude sets God up for a test holding God hostage, he said in his commentary, determining just how God is to show his divine power according to our own way, in our bodies. It places God in a role of Arabianized genie, servant. Do whatever I order. At the back and the call of one in any difficulties and situations. Need as well. It endangers the understanding of faith which leads to such attitude as God did not heal or protect you because you did not have enough faith. It's a very dangerous thought. If you had, God would heal you, protect you. It's very dangerous. That is put God to test. Demonstrate him on inappropriate confidence that God will in fact intervene at the command of our order who has faith in him. Redeemed faith. Unbiblical. Not truth. So when we read the story, ancient story, it is no longer simply an event which had happened in ancient times, but it is our story, our experience in the present times, a state, a state of our mind, our mindset, our attitude, our perspectives, our faith before God. Today, we experience the same. We
we continue to sin, fall short from the glory of God, living under the power of sin, for nature being sinful, under the law of sin, according to the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7. But, what is good news? God is God. God continues to love us. God continues to save us. God continues to provide our needs. As we see it in the ancient story in Exodus. Third meditation is we obey God. Obey. Obedience is the message of God in this ancient story. They were thirsty. And God commanded Moses to strike the rock. With the elders around him as witnesses, Moses struck the rock at Mount Horeb. Water rushed out from the rock. Water came forth, but, but, it was not simply Moses and his staff brought this wondrous act of bringing the water. It was God, God, who stood before Moses on the rock while Moses struck, struck the rock. God worked in. God worked in and through Moses and his staff. And then God provided the water for the people. That is the message from this passage. Or another ancient story, very similar of this story, came from the book of Numbers, Old Testament, chapter 20. Another water story parallel with uh, Exodus chapter 17. Then, people of Israel again complained. Complained and complained and complained to Moses. And grumbled and grumbled and grumbled to Moses because of the lack of water. Because they were thirsty. And God commanded Moses at this time to speak, speak to the rock, speak to the rock to get water. But what had happened to Moses was, Moses disobeyed God out of his anger against his own people, and he struck the rock twice. And water came forth. Now, how do we read the there's two different uh, setting of uh, tests. The lesson from these two stories is obeying the God. When God commanded to strike the rock, and strike the rock to get the water. When God commanded him to speak to the rock, and speak to the rock to get the water. But according to the book of Numbers, Moses disobeyed God, acted according to his emotional anger. But anyway, God brought the water to him to drink. But Moses had to live with his uh, consequences of his disobedience. Consequences of his disobedience. We are obedient in the, in the midst of wilderness. The gift of water of life would not come from the rock either way. Without obedience, we, we here today, sojourners in this increasingly wilderness life, desert life world, may find ourselves without water to drink that Jesus gives. 
living water, as he says, Whoever drinks this water, I give them, will come in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life, living water. I think uh, the stone, I want to share with you more about the stone, rock in the desert. Rock in the desert would be the least things that anybody expect the water coming from. Dry land. What is the use of rock in the dry, dry land? Get the water from it? No. The least things we can get the water from in the desert. But God gave the water from the rock. What does that mean? What do you see about God in this story? This ancient story tells that God brings the water from the rock. It tells of the, of the almighty power of God at the God's creation. Creating life from the least expected things. Least expected place. Least expected condition. Least expected circumstances and situations that get the water. But God made it. God created water from it. So God commands us today to strike the rock. Today's message. Strike the rock to get the water of eternal life. What are these spring waters? What does that mean? Strike the rock to get. Strike the rock means lean on God. Trust in Jesus, who is the cornerstone upon which the house is built. It means trust in Jesus, who is the living stone. Living stone upon which spiritual houses build up. Strike the rock means find the joy even in different, difficult moments in life, even in the wilderness, like a life. Strike the rock is trusting that there is always a way forward, uh, even when it seems to be like there is no way. Strike and rock, strike and rock is a declaration of faith, even when it seems like giving up life makes more sense. Strike your rock. When we gather week by week, in person or online, with our worshiping community, we are striking the rock. A confession is a confession that of all the things we could be doing today, we chose to be here to worship God. Chose to be present with this group. Lifting up, lifting up our hearts and minds in worship. The worship God Worship of God, who continue to lead us, continue to provide what we need. The God who is continue to be present, no matter what happens. So our presence means we are striking the rock, and then we can live into the moment and the experience. The fullness of God's love and grace. The abundance of God's providence, the joy of God's salvation, moment by moment, day by day, situation by situation. Yes, all of that, even in the desert like a life, like it's death. 
But we're going to have to wait until we've reached the destination away from our home. We can live that life right now in here. We can think that life right now here. Or we are going through the wilderness desert during our journey in the world. Strike! Strike! Strike your stone! Strike your rock! Trust me that God continues to provide what you need. This is the ancient story we read today. Bringing life from God. The ancient story continues to speak to us today. Ancient story. How relevant it is today, too. Singer songwriter Lin Desazo wrote this song, Ancient Words. In music. Holy words, no preserved for our walk in this world. Very sound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart words of life, words of hope. Give us strength, help us cope. In this world where every we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open heart, or oh, let the ancient words impart. Holy words of all our faiths handed down to this age came to us through sacrifice. Oh, hid the faithful words of Christ. Holy words long preserved for our walk in this world. Very sound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true. Changing me and changing you. We have come with open heart. Oh, let the ancient words in us pray. Lord, let your words always live our life in us. In all different works of life we experience, in different situations, circumstances we get through, even the life we will live, desert like life. For we are human, O oh Lord, but you are our God. You are our God. Help us growing in the faith in our own trust in you, Lord. That you will continue to guide us, lead us through our journey in the world until we reach at your eternal home. Because our journey is our home, O oh Lord. We confess. Lord, now we continue to pray as we lift up our hearts and minds. Merciful God, hear our prayers. 
We lift up, lift up all those who are suffering from their life, very challenging life, especially this time like COVID-19 pandemic, who are living in sicknesses and illnesses, in the hospital or in their home, those who are separated, isolated because of the physical limitedness, mobility. Lord, touch their hearts and mind. Let them know that you are not alone. You are always with them. Watch over them, touching them, guiding them alone. Merciful God, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Will be done in our nation, in our country, as we see in a political, cultural, social chaos, differences, confrontations, Strife is happening around. Lord, have mercy on us. Help us to see you as our only God that we are depends on. We are seeking your will, O oh Lord. Help us to go back to our basic way in our faith, O oh Lord. Help us recover our first love as a nation, love of God. Our nation built upon the faith. One nation under God. We pray for the leaders of our nation, our president, senator, house representatives, state government leaders, our local government leaders, Lord, teach them your ways. Give them your wisdom. Help them to live and lead the people with your justice, your righteousness, your love, your mercy, your compassion, so that all the people in our nation see you by our experiences, Lord. Merciful God, hear our prayers. And we pray for the people of the Church of St. Paul Church. Lord, preserve their lives in this time of COVID-19 and protect them from contracting the virus. O oh Lord, touch your healing hands upon them, their daily lives wherever they are, whatever they do. Keep them in your safe, your Lord, in your mercy, in your love. Merciful God, hear our prayers. We pray for the United Methodist Church. As we as a denomination waiting for the General Conference next year, as we are the local church waiting for the church conference next month. Lord, help us open our hearts and minds to listen what you may speak to us through all this happening around us. Lord, what do you want to accomplish through us? Speak to us. What are you calling us to do and to be in this congregation, in this church, St. Paul, O oh Lord? Speak to us. Especially for those who call to serve the Lord as our leaders. Guide them, O oh Lord. Lead them. May we pray for our community, especially school, public school, decided to open their in-class again this week. 
Lord. We pray for all the students. We pray for the teachers, or the administrators. Lord, help them to continue to guide, diligently guide for their health issues, education. We pray for those parents who are living in a very tough state of life because of COVID-19. Oh Lord, to protect their house, their home, their job, their life. We pray. Merciful God, hear our prayers. Now we pray individually in silence, O oh Lord, and continue to hear and answer our prayers. Merciful God, hear our prayers. And now we pray the Lord's prayer together, as He told us to do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive your sin against us. Deliver us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For silence the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Many of us have cars. They enable us to do things, to go out and use our talents to work, to share our talents, our resources with others, to move around God's creation. But if we don't care for our car, it becomes nothing but a broken down monument to what might have been, what could have been, what we could have done. Our church, our congregation, our family together is a vehicle to go out and share our talents, to be in ministry, to share our gifts. We need to maintain and care for our vehicle as well as participate in those ministries. So as we pray at the outset, let us be blessed with a sense of gratitude. Let us be moved to a sense of generosity. Let us care for our family, our vehicle, and care for others, which we can do in many ways from prayer shawls to the ministries that we're talking about in the announcements, to our gifts for the care and sustaining of our family. We can do those gifts in person in the offering place by mail into the church office and online let us prayerfully and joyfully be grateful and express it to God's glory Bless us and bless them. 
and use us and use them for your kingdom to come, for your life. Good use of life is spread all around the world for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord continue to shine His face upon you and be gracious to you. As we go into the world. Go now in peace and love and joy. It's assurance that Lord Jesus Christ will be for you. As you go, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good week. Worship sober. We go back to the Lord again. With God's blessing.